اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم تعوني في البدايه هذه اوت سايد لايك تو وورم ويلكم از اكسنسي مستر توني بلينكن as dear friend here in Egypt. The American uh, Secretary of State at the very beginning of the day in the morning has met Mr. President and it was a very long interview and it was a very frank. Mr. President has discussed and has handled all the developments of the bilateral relations between Egypt and the U.S. and that is the strategic partnership of the existing partnership between the friendly states. Uh, we are talking about the strong relations extended for many, many decades uh, from the joint work and joint uh, interests and mutual understanding. Mr. President has highlighted at the very beginning of the interview about the strong relations and all both countries are very keen to work to develop and to install this relation. And as you may know, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Blinken, we have met together and we have launched the working group on the joint work between Egypt and the U.S. in the sectors of tourism and higher education, education and culture, as well with the attendance of a number of Egyptian ministries, Mr. Minister of Higher Education, Minister of Antiquities and Tourism, and Mr. Minister of Education. And before launching this meeting, we have a prolonged meeting between myself and His Excellency Mr. Blinken and with the two delegations. We have talked about the bilateral relations and to further develop these relations about some uh, regional and international files uh, of uh, the shared interests for uh, both countries. And as I, as I have just mentioned, the bilateral relations are very strong. And we have talked today uh, in a very detailed manner about more and more development of this relation and the strategic nature of this relation and the giant keenness and giant due attention from uh, the two countries to work on developing uh, this relation amidst the framework of uh, mutual respect and the mutual benefits. Egypt is a, a big regional country and is a major country and the U.S. is a major power a major international power. So naturally speaking, uh, we have to have a detailed dialogue and strong relations and also very continuous deep consultations among others around uh, some regional and international files. Today we have talked in detail about cooperation and economy and investment and there are mutual understanding and mutual keenness to further develop this, these economic relations and at its heart the American investment, the U.S. investments and to foster and encourage the American companies to work here in the Egyptian market and to get the best benefits of the mega opportunities offered by the Egyptian economy to these companies and soon we will talk the, during the first quarter of the next year about holding the joint U.S.-Egyptian business conference, especially after uh, the holding of uh, the conferences in uh, Washington uh, a couple of days ago. And also we have talked about the trade relations and the importance of further developing the relations, the economic relations, and to increase the trade volume in exports and imports. And also we have talked about the education and higher education 
publication, and uh, today we, this, uh, some memorandum of, memorandum of understanding is going to be signed about the integration of uh, three branches of uh, American universities here in Egypt. Three universities will be integrated here in Egypt in addition to the other international universities like Japan, Canada, or Germany or other international and other countries that are very keen to integrate their premises and their headquarters here in Egypt in order to further develop the education here in Egypt. We have also talked about the strong existing relations in the field of education and building of schools and we are evaluating and we are uh, very evaluating the, the development of education in this regard. And also we have talked about the tourism sector, which is very important in our bilateral relations. We have talked about the destination being Egypt is considered a destination for the American citizen, either for the cure uh, tourism or the environmental tourism or the cultural investment or for the coastal uh, tourism. So uh, we have in Egypt uh, many, many destinations as a tourism and as a touristic destinations. And also we have talked about culture considering Egypt as the holy of uh, Orient and uh, like uh, the cinema and the film industries and also uh, the importance of intensifying the relations between the two countries in the cultural arena, considering that uh, the upcoming and the upcoming generations in Egypt and the U.S. do not know too much about the other country and and that's why we hold the responsibility in organizing some and many cultural events that are making the two people are closing. Certainly, we have told as well about the relations and the, and the different files, especially the fields, the cooperation and energy, renewable energy, and also the clean energy and the transport and also the communication. All these uh, files have been uh, opened and also I have agreed with my dear friend Mr. Tony Blinken that uh, we will have uh, a schedule or a timetable to hold the other working group in uh, the framework of the strategic dialogue in uh, the upcoming uh, period and also we have talked about the joint commitment and also the joint direction from uh, Mr. President Abdel Fattah Sisi and also uh, Mr. President uh, Joe Biden to, to develop and to further develop the economic and cultural relations and social ones as well between the two friendly countries. And we have talked as well about uh, different other bilateral files. We have talked about uh, the Egyptian and African and Arab candidates for uh, the UNESCO position and the importance of uh, lifting the injustice uh, targeted uh, the Arabic and the Egyptian civilization to have uh, the director general of UNESCO from Egypt and from the Arab countries. And we have uh, talked about uh, some other regional uh, files and international files, the dangerous challenges that uh, threaten the safety and the stability of the Middle East and in the African continent and in the Mediterranean and also in facing the whole world which impose uh, two big countries like the U.S. and Egypt to have uh, open continuous dialogue and we have uh, from my own side I have talked about the national strategy for human rights and the Egyptian achievements and also the Egyptian efforts exerted in implementing this strategy because uh, on behalf of myself as uh, the chairperson of the Supreme, Count, Supreme Committee of Human Rights, not for the satisfaction of any external partner, but for the very benefits of the Egyptian people and also because the Mr. President of Egypt is very keen to launch this national strategy within the comprehensive concept of human rights, which focuses on the civil political rights and also the economic 
rights and the social rights and the cultural rights as well. We have uh, talked about the crisis and uh, the dangerous crisis in Gaza Strip, and we have uh, we, there were uh, harmonized and agreed upon uh, points, especially with regard to the immediate ceasefire uh, and also to stop killing uh, of the civilians and also the necessity to reach an agreement to host all the hostages and the prisoners and also with the immediate access and the comprehensive unconditional access to the humanitarian and medical aids to the people of Gaza Strip. We have talked in detail about the most Im the importance of uh, the escalation and also uh, the, the region is about to be on the edge of a regional war. We have uh, and also we have uh, shared uh, the views and also we have talked in detail about the situation in Sudan and the crisis in Sudan and the importance of achieving a ceasefire and the importance of uh, providing the humanitarian aid towards the, the Sudanese people and I have talked about the importance of uh, not uh, putting the Sudanese army in the same equation with any other partner and the importance of uh, working on uh, activating the role of the Sudanese institutions in order for the Sudanese state to maintain the sovereignty of uh, Sudan. We have talked about the Libyan crisis and the importance of uh, making the presidential and parliamentary elections and the importance of moving towards in this regard in order to maintain the Libyan territory and we have talked as well about the issue of water, considering this issue as an existential issue for Egypt. And also we have talked about the importance of coming into terms with regarding to the Ethiopian dams and I have talked from my own side about the maximum importance of a binding legal agreement in order for operating this dam and the importance of not achieving any harm with the downest, downstream countries, the two downstream countries, especially this river is considering a crossing river for the borders. We have talked as well about the Horn of Africa and and the Horn of Africa is suffering from some kind of turbulence and I have highlighted the importance of maintaining the sovereignty of Somali and also we have talked in detail about the countering terrorism because for sure there is a joint cooperation between the US and Egypt and the field of countering and facing terrorism there is a joint interest and benefits and Egypt has a leading experience in countering uh, terrorism as bear a very comprehensive uh, proposal which is focusing on all the dimensions of the crisis including the social and economic uh, welfare and the stopping of funding of the terrorist uh, activities and terrorist groups and also to combat uh, the extremism thought especially we have uh, many many religious institutions, good leading religious institutions, and uh, at the very top is uh, the Al-Azhar and the Al-Ifta. Uh, and also we have talked about uh, the stabilizations in the Middle East uh, through uh, the importance through the importance of evacuating this region from all the mass uh, destructing weapons, especially the nuclear weapons. And we will uh, continue our uh, consultations and our cooperations and this is a very strong strategic solid relations that achieve the benefits of the two countries based on the mutual respect and based on the respect of the sovereignty of the states and we have the resp joint responsibilities to achieve stability in this important region again and again I'd like to warm welcome Mr. Secretary of State Mr. Blinken in Egypt and his uh, company delegation and over to you the floor is yours sir thank you well thank you very much and I think as you can uh, tell from um, my friend the foreign minister we covered the waterfront and it's a large waterfront indeed 
and that speaks to the fact that for the United States and Egypt, uh, more than ever, there is so much that uh, we're doing together uh, and so much that we both benefit from the fact that we're doing it together. I want to thank you, my friend, uh, and also thank President el-Sisi for the very warm welcome here in Cairo, but also uh, just for the very uh, high quality of the exchanges that we've had today, uh, both with uh, the President, uh, with my colleagues, with our strategic dialogue uh, partners. Um, we had this opportunity today to kick off the strategic dialogue, and that really underscores the commitment that both of our countries have to work to continuously strengthen what's been a century-long relationship and strengthen it in a way that's focused on delivering for our people. That's what it's all about. And I really, uh, to you, Bader, want to thank you and thank your entire team for hosting this dialogue and for getting it off to a very good start. Uh, we made progress on many of our priorities today, uh, including Egypt's development, its growth, its governance. And I'm announcing uh, $129 million in new funding to support these efforts, from providing hundreds of higher education scholarships to encouraging entrepreneurship among young people to improving rural health. Together, we are enhancing economic cooperation. We're advancing broad-based opportunity for Egyptians and Americans. We're helping women-owned small businesses get greater access to financing. We're expanding foreign direct investment beyond the more than 1,000 American companies already present in Egypt. The United States is supporting Egypt as it continues to reform its economy to become even more dynamic, even more competitive. Uh, in Washington, earlier this month, we hosted the second U.S.-Egypt Joint Economic Commission to grow our economic cooperation. For instance, making progress on a bilateral agreement that will help unlock greater private sector participation and investment here in Egypt. Next month, the United States Trade Representative will host talks between our countries to identify additional steps, like fostering an open and predictable trade environment that will further boost commercial ties and help Egypt attract more trade and more investment. Building on Egypt's leadership on climate and its hosting of COP27, um, our two countries are continuing to accelerate the clean energy transition. A team from the United States International Development Finance Corporation will be here later this week looking at green hydrogen projects, visiting a solar park uh, near Aswan as we work to harness Egypt's tremendous potential for renewable technologies. And as um, the Foreign Minister noted, President El-Sisi and I also discussed the existential nature of Egypt's growing water needs and the importance of the Nile to the Egyptian people. We're also investing together in education. Uh, and maybe this is one of the most important things that we're doing for the future of uh, our people, for the future of our countries, and for the connections between our countries. Uh, these investments are really essential to fully unleashing Egypt's potential. Uh, the Education and Cultural Working Group that we launched today will help establish nine new state-of-the-art multidisciplinary labs at STEM high schools uh, that the United States has stood up in Egypt. We'll also support 19 career centers covering nearly every Egyptian public and national university so that young Egyptians can prepare for and get the jobs of the future. A little bit later today, we have representatives of three United States universities who will sign agreements to open international campuses here in Egypt, adding to two projects that are already underway, giving Egyptian students the chance to receive an American education here in Egypt. We'll also strengthen our work to preserve Egypt's archaeological heritage, including a new effort to list the Great Temple of Obidos at, as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, growing the tourism sector that contributes so much to Egypt's economy. The United States welcomes steps that Egypt has taken this past year on human rights, releasing detainees, advancing efforts to reform pretrial detention, resolving cases involving travel bans and asset freezes for NGO employees, uh, and as the foreign minister said, these are steps that Egypt is taking uh, because it's in Egypt's interest uh, to do so. We both acknowledge additional steps that Egypt intends to take, uh, including adopting and implementing penal code reforms, continuing to pardon and release prisoners, uh, detainees, and ensuring that journalists, human rights defenders, 
and all Egyptians can voice any disagreements freely. Uh, there's strong bipartisan interest in the United States Congress to seeing Egypt continue to make uh, this progress and respecting and safeguarding fundamental freedoms can only strengthen the partnership between our countries and, as the foreign minister himself says, benefit the Egyptian people. That's why Egypt is engaging in this course. Uh, we discussed how we can enhance long-standing security cooperation, whether that's uh, Egypt's major peacekeeping contributions in places like South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, or, as the minister mentioned, the fight against ISIS and other extremists in the Sinai Peninsula. Egypt continues to be an indispensable partner in pursuing a ceasefire in Gaza, one that brings the hostages home, that relieves the suffering of the people of Gaza, and creates the foundation for an enduring peace. I thank the President and the Foreign Minister and other colleagues for Egypt's commitment to this work. And we discussed the importance of getting this deal across the finish line, something we'll continue to pursue along with our Qatari counterparts. We all know that a ceasefire is the best chance to tackle the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, to address the risks to regional stability, risks that I know are felt viscerally here in Egypt. In particular, the Houthis' continued attacks on global commerce in the Red Sea, aided and abetted by Iran, are reducing traffic in the Suez Canal, and that's cost Egypt a projected $5 billion in lost revenue. Egypt has been instrumental in addressing the conflict in Sudan, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Along with our diplomatic partners, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Switzerland, the African Union, the United Nations, and others, uh, we made progress in Switzerland last month, opening new crossings to allow humanitarian assistance to get to people who need it, and getting the rapid support forces to agree to a code of conduct for its fighters. That progress, however, is now threatened by a new RSF offensive in Al-Fashir, already resulting in the deaths and displacement of thousands of vulnerable people. The RSF must take every step to protect the lives of innocents and respect its commitment to protect civilians. The Sudanese armed forces have to halt indiscriminate bombing. Both must come together and come to the table to agree on implementing agreements that were reached in Jeddah and to stop this brutal war. Next week at the UN General Assembly in New York, I'll be bringing together our partners to align around the next steps to expand humanitarian access, to protect civilians, and to push for a cessation of hostilities. The United States is grateful for Egypt's continued partnership and leadership in this work, as well, I have to say, for the generosity of the Egyptian people, welcoming hundreds of thousands of Sudanese refugees. We'll also continue to consult with Egypt on bringing greater stability to Libya including supporting the UN uh, and its efforts to shore up the central bank and work toward a longer-term political settlement. So, uh, as you've heard from both of us, these are some, not all, uh, of the subjects that we discussed today. Um, and I think, again, at this challenging moment, the importance of our partnership, the partnership between Egypt and the United States, is on full display. And that's why today's dialogue is so important and timely, reminding not only what's at stake, but also what's possible for our people and people throughout the region. So let's take the questions uh, to Samir Omar Sky News Arabia. Yesterday, you have made phone calls with the Prime Minister of Lebanon in order to declare the supporting of Lebanon. So, with regarding to your statement yesterday and with regarding to what has happened yesterday in Lebanon, is considered a great aggression against Lebanon. What has happened yesterday is considered. Considering a continuation of Israel, and this can affect the relations of the negotiation stance. And the question to Mr. Blinken, don't you think that Israel, while enlarging their actions in Lebanon and in the West Bank and in other regions, aren't considering your own guidance and your own directions, and Israel are not following the path of ceasefire? What about the American stance? regarding Tony Netanyahu's situation. Uh, 
طبعا موقف مصر actions that can attack the sovereignty of Lebanon. We are in a full solidarity with the government of Lebanon and the people of Lebanon. We have condemned and we will condemn any targeting of the Lebanese sovereignty and certainly any unilateral actions towards the escalation must be condemned and is totally rejected and does not encourage any stability. Accordingly and certainly such escalation and such dangerous escalation can lead to what we have warned from before, which is moving to the edge of a comprehensive regional war that can kill everybody. So Egypt as Egypt as a basic regional power, as an international power, is very concerned with stopping the escalation and to refuse such unilateral policies in order to focus on the ultimate goal and not to scattering our attention, which is the access uh, to have an immediate ceasefire and we are totally trust and we are totally confident that uh, the key word here and the real problem and the heart of this crisis is the continuation of the Israeli aggression in Gaza. So if uh, we stop this aggression and if we can reach to an immediate ceasefire, so certainly this will lead to the decrease of the escalation in the region and the this will stop the aging to the brink and this not providing any pretext to any other partner or the non-state the non-state holders to exploit the suffering of the Palestinian people so we are we have said it clear the goal is very clear it is a must to focus on the stopping of the aggression and to reach an immediate ceasefire so this is the valve of peace and safe and security in the region so with regard to Lebanon, uh, the United States uh, did not know about, uh, nor was it involved in, uh, these uh, incidents. And we're still gathering uh, the information and gathering the facts. Uh, broadly speaking, we've been very clear, and we remain very clear, about the importance of all parties avoiding any steps that could further escalate the conflict that we're trying to resolve uh, in Gaza, uh, to see it spread to other fronts. It's clearly not in the interest of anyone involved to see that happen. Uh, and that's why, again, it's imperative that all parties refrain from any actions that could uh, escalate the conflict. We're focused on getting this ceasefire over the finish line. Uh, that would also, I think, materially improve the prospects of actually defusing the situation in northern Israel and southern Lebanon, uh, particularly uh, creating an environment in which people have the confidence to return to their homes, the tens of thousands of displaced people in Israel as well as in southern Lebanon. Uh, getting the ceasefire would facilitate getting to that kind of agreement, and that's clearly the best path forward for everyone involved. So uh, again, it's imperative that everyone uh, avoid taking steps that could further escalate or spread the conflict. Leon Bruno from AFP. Uh, thank you for, for doing this, and thank you for your hospitality, Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, I'd like to, I'll try to be short, for once. I'm sure you'll be happy about that. Um, in your meetings today, uh, did you submit any new ideas to bridge the remaining gaps to get to that elusive ceasefire in Gaza? And what are your expectations now? And also, this is your 10th time, 10th uh, trip to the region. Uh, since October 7, and you have always gone to Israel, but you won't be going this time. So why is that? Uh, is it because of tensions with the government of Israel? And to, to you, Foreign Minister, um, one of the issues uh, remaining sticking points, if you will, according to U.S. officials, is this issue of Israeli presence in the Philadelphia corridor. Um, would you Egypt, of course, 
accept any extended Israeli presence in the corridor or not? Is that a definitive no? Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Uh, so first, with regard to uh, uh, the travel here, uh, this trip was focused on the strategic dialogue between the United States and Egypt. This is something that we uh, were determined to, uh, to do uh, and that uh, I was determined at the President's uh, direction uh, to help launch and uh, I'm very glad we had an opportunity to do that. Of course, uh, it also comes at a time when we're working as closely as possible on getting the ceasefire and so we had a detailed conversation with President al-Sisi as well as with um, senior colleagues from the uh, Egyptian government working directly on the, uh, uh, the ceasefire about the status of these, uh, these efforts and, and, uh, and the way forward. And look, what I can tell you uh, is this, and as we've uh, said before, we've made a tremendous amount of progress over the last uh, month, month and a half. Uh, there are, I think, in the, in the agreement, uh, 18 paragraphs, 15 of them are agreed, but the remaining issues uh, need to be resolved. Uh, we, put, uh, we put forward with uh, the Egyptians and the Qataris uh, ideas for resolving them. Uh, the bottom line is this, their resolution is less a question of substance and more a question of political will. And for both parties, it's important to demonstrate that political will to get this agreement concluded. Um, for Israel, at this point, uh, just uh, last week, the IDF announced that the Rafa brigades had been dismantled. Hamas is not in a position to repeat the horrific attacks of October 7th. Concluding a ceasefire agreement would bring the hostages home and, as I mentioned a moment ago, would also open important prospects for resolving other high-tension areas, including in um, northern Israel and, and southern Lebanon with Hezbollah, the Red Sea, uh, and other places, all of which is in Israel's interest as well as opening up opportunities to move in a very different direction in terms of strengthening uh, Israel's security and place in the region far into the future. For um, Hamas, uh, it uh, can't continue not only to hold hostages, but to hold all of the people of Gaza hostage. Uh, getting to the ceasefire would result in a totally different environment for the people of, uh, of Gaza, uh, ending uh, the conflict for an initial period uh, and one we would work to make enduring, resulting in an immediate massive infusion of humanitarian assistance for people who desperately need it uh, and clearly bettering the lives of people that they purport to represent. So the most important thing in this moment is seeing a demonstration of political will to finally conclude this agreement. Uh, and that's what we discussed. Uh, we also discussed uh, in some detail what would be necessary arrangements if an agreement is, is finally reached in terms of the so-called day after. Uh, what happens in Gaza in terms of its, uh, its governance, its security, uh, its reconstruction. And here as well, uh, Egypt is and will be a critical partner, and I think we had a uh, very useful conversation about that uh, today as well. So uh, let me add to what has been mentioned by uh, the Secretary uh, of State, uh, naturally speaking, uh, and as a matter of fact, Egypt will continue uh, in exerting uh, each and every sincere uh, efforts uh, 
through the collaboration with the France and the US and also with the brothers in Qatar, we will not stop to exert this sincere efforts in order to stop the killing of the Palestinians and to achieve the ceasefire and to stop the Israeli aggression. I second and I totally agree with what has been mentioned by Mr. Secretary, Mr. Blinken, because the absence of uh, the political will. This is very clear in order to, we have to face the fact in order to reach to an agreement. So uh, some pretexts and some justifications are being falsified and are being created in order to shatter and this attract us. So this is the real problem. With regarding to your question about the Philadelphia uh, corridor, we have a very frank and clear stance, and we have repeated it many times. Egypt will not accept any changes to the rules of the work, the existing rules before the 7th of October, especially with regarding to the rules of the operation of uh, Rafah crossing from the Palestinian side and the total rejection of any military power on the cross on the crossing borders and this is a very frank and clear Egyptian stance. Thank you. Basanta Mustafa, Middle East News Agency. Question to uh, Mr. Badra Abdelati, Your Excellency, you have discussed today the situation in Gaza. To what extent you have reached, especially with regarding to the Egyptian Qatar mediation to achieve the ceasefire and to put an end to the humanitarian suffering from an almost uh, one year. As you may know and as all of you may know, the efforts are still exerted and there's intensified communications and again and again uh, the problem as mentioned by uh, the U.S. as Secretary of State, the problem is not in the content or in the essence. The problem is in the absence of the political will to reach to this important binding agreement. So we cannot bet on the future of the stability of this important region in the Middle East as a reason or as a justification for the absence of the political will for any partner. So we will continue in the exerting of our efforts and we will continue the communication with our friends in the U.S. in order to continue the achieving the pressure and exerting the efforts in this regard in order to be able to reach to this agreement which is will be very decisive and will, will be important in order to arrange for the next day after war and to talk further about the stability in the region and also to talk about the political horizon and also to talk about the necessary situations in order to build the Palestinian state and also to talk about the providing of uh, humanitarian aid. It's uh, not acceptable to use the hungry as a tool against the Gaza people. This, can you imagine that this is happening in the 21st century under the ears and under the eyes of all the people. So we will continue in our sincere efforts side by side with the U.S. and also with our... Kylie Atwood, CNN. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's one minute here. Um, okay, first to our Egyptian host, Minister Abdullahi. Do you believe that Hamas is still committed to the ceasefire and hostage talks? And if yes, how do you know that? Uh, this is a question for both of you following up on the explosion of hundreds um, of the pagers uh, by Hezbollah fighters in Lebanon that we've learned about in the last 24 hours. Uh, you both spoke about the need not to escalate the situation in the region, but does this specific attack make efforts to get to a ceasefire and a hostage deal harder to accomplish? And then Secretary Blinken, uh, two for you. I will not be as short as Leon. Um, 
How much do you expect this attack by Hezbollah, uh, sorry, this attack on the Hezbollah pagers could impact their operations, given that they now have a communication system that's down, they have at least nine people dead and thousands injured. And you said that the remaining issues are yet to be resolved between Israel and Hamas when it comes to the hostage and ceasefire talks. But what has changed for us? Can you help us understand earlier this month, U.S. officials are saying that the U.S. was going to put a new proposal on the table within days, and we haven't seen that. Do you need to see a demonstration of political will from both sides that you just spoke to before putting that new proposal on the table? Thank you. Uh, شكراً جزيلاً uh, uh, فيما يتعلق بالسؤال الأول uh, طبعاً مصر تتعامل مع حماس كفصيل وطني فلسطيني ومن uh, uh, اتصالاتنا المستمرة والدورية مع uh, حماس uh, uh, هم يؤكدون بما لا يدع مجال للشك التزامهم الكامل بالاتفاق والتفاهمات التي تم التوصل إليها في 27 مايو الماضي وأيضا بالتعديلات التي وردت في ورقة الثاني من يوليو الماضي هناك التزام من جانبهم بما تم التوصل إليه من تفاهمات في هاتين الورقتين في 27 مايو وفي 2 يوليو وهذا هم هو ما يتم نقله لنا بأنهم ملتزمون تماما بما سبق التوصل إليه من تفاهم في هاتين الورقتين بالنسبة لما ما حدث بالأمس في لبنان بطبيعة الحال أي تصعيد بما في ذلك ما حدث بالأمس هو بالتأكيد يعرقل ويضع حجرات عثرة أمام التوصل إلى اتفاق لوقف إطلاق النار وصفقة تضمن إطلاق صراح الرهائن والأسرة بالتأكيد هذا ما حدث لا يعرقل فقط المباحثات الجارية ولكن أيضا يحمل نزر الدخول في حرب شاملة كما, كما ذكرت هناك احتمال لوقوع أي خطأ من هنا أو هناك قد يؤدي إلى الولوج إلى حرب شاملة في المنطقة وهذا أمر خطير للغاية لذلك أهمية وقف التصعيد أهمية التوقف عن أي سياسات أحادية أهمية التوقف عن سياسة الاختيالات كل هذه السياسات مدانة ومرفوضة في آن واحد So, Kylie, we're, we're still gathering information. We're still gathering the facts. Uh, I can't tell you uh, in this moment what, uh, what impact this will have. I certainly can't speak to what impact it might have on Hezbollah and, and its operations. Uh, that would demand other expertise. And again, it's also uh, necessary to fully understand what's happened. And we're still in the process of, uh, of doing that. Um, one of the hallmarks, uh, if that's the right word, of this effort, this extensive effort by the United States, Egypt, and Qatar to get to a ceasefire, uh, to be the, the mediators, and to get it across the finish line, one of the hallmarks has been that it's a, it's a complicated process. Um, and even the communications involved are complicated uh, for obvious reasons, so things take time. and. Time and again, we've seen that in the intervening time, you might have an event, an incident, something that makes the process more difficult, that threatens to, to slow it, stop it, derail it. And anything of that nature, by definition, is probably not good uh, in terms of achieving the result that we want, which is uh, the ceasefire. Uh, just a, f a few weeks ago, we uh, had just had a very productive uh, session on trying to finalize one of the, the big outstanding issues, which deals broadly with the uh, release of hostages and prisoners, the ratios, and the schedule, and so forth. And there had been a very, very good discussion of that between the mediators and the parties. And then 48 hours later, Hamas executed six 
hostages, including an American, first Cold War Poland. So that, of course, had an impact on the progress that, uh, that we were making. But I come back to what I think we both said in terms of where we are now, which is that there are important but discrete issues that need to be resolved. We've put forward different ideas for how to resolve them. They are clearly resolvable, but the key ingredient to getting a resolution of these outstanding issues is political will. That's what we're both looking for uh, going forward. That's what's so imperative that we're going to get the ceasefire across the finish line. You have to see political will demonstrated in some way. No, no, we put, uh, we put um, our, our ideas on, on the table. And there's, again, there's a process in go, going back and forth, uh, getting uh, reactions, getting uh, responses, or sometimes not getting responses. Uh, but I think we're, as we, well, I don't want to speak for my friend, but I think as we see it, the, uh, what's missing in this moment to get this across the finish line is clear political will. Uh, if that will is present, this agreement gets done. If this agreement gets done, it has immediate uh, and uh, incredible benefits for everyone involved, starting with the hostages coming home and the people in Gaza getting immediate relief, uh, and then opening much broader prospects for peace, for security, not only in Gaza, but uh, throughout the region. So the interests, I believe, are clear. Um, and now the question is getting that final bit of political will to get this done and get us all moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. See you.